All right, I got myself a dynamics final soon, and I'm going to make myself a quick worded crash course, a little mental reminder for everything that I need to know for the final. So if you got a dynamics final on the way soon, I suggest you watch this video. It's going to be less than 10 minutes, and I'm going to walk you through the logic and steps for every single chapter that you might have to cover in your final. All right, so starting with the kinematics of particles. Kinematic of particles is easily derived by three formulas, ADS is equal to VDV. You derive this into a bunch of other formulas that you need, uh, know how to integrate, and you're gonna be all right. And also V is equal to DS over DT, and A is equal to DV over DT. And make sure that once you, when you do your time derivatives, you do chain rule well. Now, next chapter. Kinetics of particles, force and acceleration. F is equal to ma. This is the most basic thing. You break you break it down into either um, rectilinear f is equal to ma, so x y z coordinates, or you break it down into normal tangential by normal coordinates, and that's ntb. And know the formula as well, and you're gonna be all right. And make sure that you point your axis in the right direction because your cylindri cylindrical coordinates. The R direction is different from your N direction. It's actually opposite. All right. And you can also derive your F is equal to MA into cylindrical coordinates. And these questions are more useful for more general stuff. That's not circular. And for cylindrical coordinates, I don't really have anything else to say besides know the formula as well. Write in on a cheat sheet or know it by heart or just practice the problems till you puke so you know what to do with it. All right, next chapter, kinetics of particles, work and energy formulas. You have two types of systems, a non-conservative system and a conservative system. In your conservative system, there's no non-conservative force. Don't, don't work on it. So you only got kinetic energy, potential energy, and the energy of any non uh, any conservative stuff like springs springs is a conservative spring have springs have potential energy just like gravity has potential energy and what's a conservative force basically is just saying it doesn't care about the path that it's taken it just cares about your point a and your point b and the distance between point a and point b the straight distance that's it that goes for gravity that goes for that goes for um springs and uh in dynamics there's no electromagnetic force usually so you don't need to really care about that i don't think there's ever going to be a question with electromagnetic magnetic force in your final for dynamics so know about that for non-conservative just know that it does work and it, every it, it does work along the path so care about the length of the path and also use work and energy formula when there's no time involved there's only distance differences involved well the distance is the difference basically i'm saying if you have a question dealing with the state of this thing versus the state of this thing at this point versus this point if the, uh, it, it's time that passes in the question. You gotta use impulse and momentum, but if it's distance that happens and no time whatsoever whatsoever is mentioned, you gotta use work and energy. Now, going to the next chapter, which is impulse and momentum. Impulse and momentum, you gotta, that's when time is involved instead, instead of distance. So let's say you want the state of this thing after this number of seconds happened. You use impulse and momentum instead of work and energy. It's pretty simple. Just know your impulse and momentum formula, and uh, you should be all right. Impulse and momentum, by the way, it's um, here's a misconception. It's not relative velocity. So in the formula of impulse, it's mass times velocity. It's not the relative velocity compared to the thing. Let's say you have uh, a box on a truck that's moving, you would be tempted to say that this has zero momentum, but actually it has an absolute momentum of the mass of the box times the absolute velocity relative to the ground, instead of just zero momentum because it's on a box. You know what I mean? So be careful with that. All right, next. 
what do we have next? Systems of particles, it seems. Systems of particles, just be careful that when two things have impacts, okay? Right now we're talking about impact. Impact of two particles. Um, the horror, the tangential, the tangential velocity doesn't change, but the normal velocity changes after impact. And be careful with your coefficient of restitution after impact. And systems of particles, there's not really much to say about it. Actually, it's pretty important to just make sure to review this chapter pretty well. But before we we're doing just the work and energy, impulse and momentum, kinematics of a single particle, now it's a bunch of particles. And uh, most of the times you just got to sum the, the the states of each particle for the problem. So let's say for work and energy, well, you're going to have to sum the kinetic energy of this particle one, particle two for the total kinetic energy of the system at state one versus at state two, same thing. A potential energy also the same thing. And the work, just the work, you just got to make sure, yeah, no, work is just done upon this whole like system. Impulse and momentum, same uh, same principle, okay? Each particle has its own energy and momentum and whatnot. So, next thing. All right. Also, for fun, if you have time, you can also derive... Uh, you can derive the work and energy formulas, the impulse and momentum formulas using kinematic formulas. Try it out yourself. I did it. It works. Everything connected. I felt like Oppenheimer after that. Whatever. Okay. So chapter 17. No, I'm at chapter 16 now. In the system of particles was part of chapter 15. So chapter 16 is starting to be planar kinematics of rigid bodies in planar motion so kinematics of rigid bodies in planar motion what you got to know about kinematics of rigid bodies in planar motion is you're not just a particle anymore you're a particle has a mass but it has no dimension really it's just a point but now you actually have let's say a plate or a potato in a plate not just like a plate of a tip potato or whatever you want to call this you're in planar motions so this is 2d 3d gets fucked but that's for later so for planar what you got to know is um you either tackle the problem using absolute motion relative motion analysis and in relative motion analysis sometimes you have a rotating axis and make sure to not make the same mistake that I made that cost me 12 hours of my life on a single question. It was to do a question of relative motion with rotating axis of this second thing relative to the first thing. Using absolute motion. It cost me 12 hours of my life. Don't do that. Make sure to look at the problem well. Okay. And make sure to tackle it using the right approach. Now. Another thing that you might want to know is angular acceleration and angular velocities, they're the same throughout the whole body. It's hard to visualize, but really it's the same. So let's see this thing is rotating, okay? The relative velocity at any point, no, another relative velocity, I'm sorry, I'm kind of sleep deprived, it's like almost 12 p.m. now. The angular velocity and the angular vol uh, acceleration at any point is the same. And also, like, from that point, observing this is going to be the same. From that point, observing this is going to be the same. Try it out yourself. Because if you're at, at that point, let's say you want to ex imagine that you're standing at this point and this point is fixed. This is the observing frame and this is moving. This is like this, right? It's rotating, from my view, it's rotating counterclockwise. And if this is rotating counterclockwise like this, from this point, if this point was, if this point was flip fixed and it's rotating, well, it's still rotating counterclockwise. So that proves my point and it's going to be at the same rate, either you observe from this point or from this point. And also, just an extra little addition to this, moment is also the same. Moment applies to, and you can like move around the moment at any point, 
you know, uh, any point of the body. It's going to be, you just apply them like, it, it's just like, um, translate, like, uh, linear forces okay even though it's applied there technically it's also just applied there below so you can move it around at any point of the body it's like you can move it like this you can move it like that but you just need to be careful with linear forces that well at the point of application it has a certain moment arm relative to the axis of rotation so if it's if it's there the moment arm is going to be this and it's going to create a moment. It's different from a force that's applied directly on the axis of the, the, the point of rotation. And that's going to create zero moment because the moment arm is actually zero. The moment arm is just the perpendicular distance between the applied force axis and the axis of rotation. But the thing is, this it has zero moment arm. But in your sum of forces some of linear forces that doesn't really matter okay that's what i'm trying to say now next thing was that clear enough though if it's not clear enough let me know in the comments um next thing that's that was for planar kinematics of rigid bodies i'm pretty sure that planar kinematics of rigid bodies had more stuff to be said so let me just make sure, bear with me. I'm just gonna go through this and I'm gonna keep speaking while I'm looking through my pages of shit. Honestly, no, that was it, that was it. So this is uh, the, the chapter that deals mostly with linkages and gears and uh, stuff. Just know your chain rule well. That's another thing I wanted to say. Know your chain rule well, know your calculus well, know, to der know how to derive properly. Uh, know to know how to use your product rules and quotient rules, especially for absolute motion analysis. Now, for planar kinetics of rigid body force and acceleration, um, mass, moment of inertia, know the formula well, parallel axis theorem for when you want to analyze a thing about another point besides the center of gravity. Radius of gyration is pretty easy. That's basically a given. If they give you the radius of gyration, all you got to do to find the moment of inertia about the point is just mass times radius of gyration squared. That's really easy. Equations of motion. Equations of motion. Okay. That part. Um, know well the def definition of kinetic moments about a point. Because it expands into something pretty interesting. But really it's just the moment of inertia about center of gravity times angular acceleration plus mass times acceleration at center of gravity time, times the perpendicular distance between that point and the center of gravity. That's really what it is, kinetic moments. That's it. Um, and... Why do you need kinetic moments? That's just to find a moment about a point other than the center of gravity. Now, pure translation, general plane motion, rotation about fixed axis. Easy stuff. Oh, the wheel, the wheel. Here's one thing you need to remember about the wheel is that at the center of the wheel, okay, there's actually no normal acceleration towards the ground is only a tangential acceleration that's all you got to know about the wheel there's a tangential velocity tangential acceleration but there's no normal acceleration and if you visualize it well as the wheel goes on this point doesn't go down that's why it's kind of telling you there's no normal acceleration only tangential acceleration and you find this tangential acceleration using the angular acceleration of the wheel times the ra radius basically the distance between the ground the point of zero um, velocity the instantaneous center of zero velocity and the uh, and the center of the wheel uh, and what is the instantaneous center of zero velocity this happens when there's no no slip the wheel doesn't slip there's this point at any point when the at any moment when the at any time instant when the real wheel is rolling this point has zero velocity think about it try to visualize it all right 
it doesn't actually have a velocity. It's counterintuitive because, you know, you see a wheel rolling. Clearly, this thing is moving. There's a velocity. But actually, at the point touching the ground, there's zero velocity. And uh, there's videos on YouTube about that. If you don't understand it too well, I can't just explain to you this under 10 minutes and explain all the dynamics. So, there's that. And uh, be careful with the questions for uh, planar kinetics of rigid body because they're pretty hard as much as you'd like them to be easy. <laughs> uh, practice the problems. All right, next. Planar kinetics of rigid body work and energy. For that, it's actually kind of very similar to for work and energy of systems of particles but instead now the thing has an actual dimension just be careful how the moments are applied and apply the previous chapter with force and acceleration for kinetics of rigid body on in this chapter on the stuff of this chapter and um Really, you just got to explore this chapter, honestly. I can't really say anything specific besides uh, when you realize that a system is conservative, it makes your life easier. And if it's not conservative, it's still kind of easy. Actually, non-conservative problems are still pretty easy. Uh, overall, this chapter is kind of easy. I'm not even going to say more about it. Just practice the problem. See it for yourself. It's pretty easy. Chapter 19 is uh, planar kinetics, rigid body, impulse, and momentum. Still, it's pretty easy, except for a few problems. You just really got to practice the problems case by case. And um, a lot of, in this chapter, wheels are often involved. So... You got to really know well your physics of your wheels. Now, the fucked up part starts at chapter 20. 3D kinematics of rigid body. Ugh. This chapter and the next chapter, chapter 21, kinetics of uh, rigid body in 3D, they're fucking disgusting. I don't have anything to say about it besides I hope you don't have to go through what I'm going through. <laughs> Um, I'm suffering in those right now. I, although I could say a few things before I end the video. Uh, derive stuff from the inertia tensor, really. You can derive a lot of stuff from the inertia tensor, but that's for chapter 21. Chapter 20 for kinematics. You're on your own, sorry. I can't, I can't help you right now. It's fucked. It's really fucked. That's when you got to do a lot of 3D cross products over and over again for a bunch of stuff. And um, good luck, man. It's I, I can't tell you more about this anymore. Yeah, fuck that. Fuck 3D inertia stuff.